Magandang magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Abay bagong laya ang ating panauhin ngayon. Si Miss Laila, Norma, Yulalia, Josefa, <laughs> Maestrado de Lima. Laila oh. de Lima, in short, ang ating pong guest. Welcome back to Freedom, Senator Laila. Magandang araw din sa iyo, Malu, saka sa mga nakikinig at nanonood sa iyo. Maraming maraming salamat for having me in your show. Eldest of four children. Abay, yes. Uh, one of the top notchers sa bar exam. Nung siya 1985 bar exam, yes. Number eight. bar exam. Number eight po siya. Abay, yes. uh, school din na Catholic school. Pero yes. no graduate from San Beda. San Beda. Yes. Bedan itong ating guest. Okay, Ma'am Laila. Three years after freedom, effectively four days, ano, three days after freedom, ano po yung ganap na so far? Sabi niyo you're moving on. What does it mean? Ano yung gusto ninyong balikan, uh, ipagpatuloy, o i-resume? Ipagpatuloy. Ipagpatuloy lang. Uh-huh. Kasi hindi naman talaga ganap na naputol. Kaya... Uh, except lang siyempre because of the physical restrictions. My physical liberty, my physical movement has been limited, has been confined to that uh, small space in, uh, in the custodial center. But in spirit, in mind, and in resolve, it's always been there. So, maski nga yung mga, yung mga, you know, the monitoring of the events, the monitoring of the happenings in the country, the ills of society. I've, I've always been deeply interested since I'm updated naman because of my daily readings of the newspapers and other uh, documents that are being sent to me by my staff. So, pagpatuloy lang because hindi naman talaga nagbago. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung pagbabago is yung, yung may mga, kung ilan-ilan din na mga da, yung pagbabago sa mga daily life ko. Kasi syempre, as I said, the limited space, hindi ko naman, I, I didn't have time and the means to be interacting with people except now with visitors only during visiting hours, which were it was even uh, severely restricted during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then, I uh, my, my hours had to be really just in my room reading, uh, writing, praying, and some physical physical chores. Mm-hmm. So, but it's still really basically the same because mm-hmm. while I'm not free physically because of the restrictions of my movement, uh, I've always been free. I remain free in spirit and okay. in resolve. Okay. Yun pong pagkakakulong ninyo, anim na taon lang pa, ano po, at walong buwan. Eh, ano po yung nangyari na pagbabago kay Senator Laila de Lima for better or for worse? For better is because I've been more conscious of my environment, the physical environment also, because I've, I've learned to really appreciate even very little of mundane things in the okay. small environment that I had. Small things that I used to take for granted. The rains, the insects, the the, the cats, the guard the the garden. Then the now I see well then I I I, I was surrounded by uh high concrete walls with barbed wires. Now so in that very limited space I had to make do for what I have. I cannot just order food. I cannot just eat what I wanted to eat. I cannot just really, uh, I, can, I could not buy what I wanted to buy, the, the clothes that I wanted to, to wear. I could only make do of what was being sent to me and what was being gifted to me by my friends. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, But I, these are blessings in the sense that I've, I've learned to really realize the limitations of being a human being mm-hmm. and in the the, the 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 beauty and the importance of human nature mm-hmm. that uh, and, and the the importance of being 
of having a limited existence in this world. Okay. That any time you could be, you could leave this world. Mm -hmm. Because either, you know, you can never tell also whether I will be coming out alive mm -hmm. from from that uh, confinement. Mm -hmm. So th those are, you know, for worse, I I I I, I kind of think of anything worse except for the fact that. They did that to me, okay. that they wasted more than six years of my life. Mm -hmm. They ruined my life to a certain extent, Okay, but not, nothing more, okay. not, 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 nothing worse actually mm -hmm. happened except that, the lost milestones, the lost opportunities, etc. Okay. Senator Laila, kung babalikan po natin, ano, six years, eight months, 21 days, parang ang kwento ninyo, ang narrative ho, eh, Ah, uh, apat na lalaki ang parang nagkuyog-kuyog sa inyo. President Duterte, Justice Secretary Butaliano Aguirre, Harry Roque, Solicitor General Jose Calida. They built up a case against you and of course they got witnesses. Ito ho ba ay parang tipong sa tingin niyo, ano ba talaga yung dahilan ng Duterte admin? Gusto nila akong patahimikin. Mm -hmm. Gusto nilang uh, ma ma break yung aking spirit, yung aking resolve. Patahimikin, huminto na ako doon sa ginagawa ko. Ano yung ginagawa ko? Yung pinapaimbestigahan ko. Yung mga nangyayaring mga patayan noon. Yung pagpatay. Yung mga summary executions or killings under that murderous and a sham uh, a war on drugs under the Duterte regime. They wanted me to stop, but I refused to stop. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? They They had to invent and fabricate these stories this they, they had to uh, come up with with these witnesses who had to falsely testify against me so they wanted to silence me they wanted to break my spirit in the hope that i will really stop doing that okay but uh yes, sabi ko nga, yes. okay go ahead please uh, bago po yung Next question uh, Pebrero 2017, nung nagkaroon ho ng mga unang mga kaso. Before that, si President Duterte ang may pahiwatig na aba, even from a foreign government source, merong bank account kayo na nakapasok daw yung malaking halaga ng pera. Pero before even before that, you investigated the Davao Death Squad, so-called DDS. Ano po? Nung si Pangulong Duterte ay eh, nasa Davao pa noon at kayo ay chairperson ng Commission on Human Rights. Nagkaroon ho ba kayo ng kiskisan? Bago pa yung Pebra, Pebre, Pebrero 2017 na kaso ninyo. Kayo ba'y nagkaharapan, nagkainitan? Oh, yes. Do, ah, yes. Do sa sina, yung sinabi mo na nga na pag-investigate uh, namin ng DDS killings, I initiated that. We went all the way to Davao City. That was, uh, you know, so-called enemy territory. But we went there mm -hmm. and then we, we uh, summoned him. He was the first resource person summoned because mm -hmm. they're not yet called, you know, these these are not called witnesses because it was just an inquiry. It's not yet a, a judicial case or a court case. So these are resource persons. So he was the very first resource person summoned by the H CHR. It was a, an open and public hearing. I was presiding over that hearing. And we were, you know, the the, the exchanges between the two of, two of us were rather intense. And I think he never expected that from somebody and especially a woman like that. And okay. I, I'd like to believe that he never, ever forgotten that. That, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that he couldn't believe that uh, somebody would ever do that to him, mm -hmm. uh, let alone a woman. Okay. So, so hindi na niya nakalimutan yan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hanggang uh, sa pinakulong ako. Ngayon, Uh, simula okay, ko noon, nung nag-umpisa mag-investiga at magkaroon ng kaso, ang problema, eh medyo naabando na din yata kayo ng mga kasama ninyo sa Senado at nagkaroon ng parallel investigation sa House of Representatives. Paano ho yung inyong pakiwari noon? Parang tila lahat eh lumalayas sa piling nyo. Masakit talaga yon, Kasi alam naman nila na ginagawa ko lang naman yung mandato ko noon as chairperson of the committee on justice and human rights since i what well, since i saw that it was happening again that mm -hmm. what was happening several years ago in 2007 to 2009 yung mga dds killings 
was once again happening when he became the president, then I had to do something special because I, I'm a human rights advocate and I was the chairperson of the very committee that was expected to do something. So mm -hmm. masakit para sa akin yun. But then again, politics prevailed. Yes. Power play prevailed. Uh, they, 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 they simply could not afford to displace the man. So the majority of, ma of them voted to oust me. Ang talagang nag-negative votes lang is yung mga kaalyado ko sa, pol sa politics, which, which is uh, uh, a minority. Now, lalo na dun sa House, talaga naman nakita nyo naman yun. It was, a, it was a witch hunt and it was totally foul. Mm -hmm. uh, yung, yung paninira nila sa okay. pagkatao ko, sa pagkababae ko. And uh, they never respected really the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, there's no such thing as the uh, parliamentary courtesy. I was a sitting senator and they, they subjected me to that kind of an investigation. It, it was no ordinary investigation, unparalleled in its character, mm -hmm. how, they, how they really uh, conducted that and the, the questions that were asked of, of the resource persons there. Mm -hmm. uh, the misogynistic uh, uh, type of questions. So mm -hmm. it, it was very painful to me. Mm -hmm. um, although at the time, the circumstances were such that mm -hmm. parabang sa tingin nila, wala silang ibang choice mm -hmm. but to go with the time. Okay. Ngayon, sa totoo lang po, isuma natin ano po, tatlong kaso ho yung nasumite sa regional trial court tas may pang-apat sa Office of the Ombudsman. Pare-pareho ho ba to? At ang natitira na lang ay yung nasa Muntinlupa ngayong mga panahong ito. Tama po ba? Yes. Dalawa na yung na-dismiss o na-acquit ako. Mm -hmm. And then yung isa nga ito na nag-cabail na, 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 na ako. So okay. hindi pa tapos. Pero mm -hmm. umaasa kami na madidismiss din ito kasi magpa-file nga kami in due time ng demurrer mm -hmm. to evidence. Pag mm -hmm. mag-grant is... Uh, that would be tantamount also to acquittal. Yung sa ombudsman naman, halos pareho rin naman yan. Diyan sa mga, na mga sinampa, diyan sa, sa Muntinlupa courts. Yung mga ebidensya diyan, pareho lang. Yung mga nandyan na mga sinampa diyan sa yung mga tatlong kaso na final ng illegal, ng conspiracy to commit illegal drug trading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ngayon, bago pa ho kayo nagkaroon ng arraignment, uh, 18 months later, ano ho? Patapos tayo yes. ng pag-uli. Ang yes. Supreme Court ay nagkaroon ng dalawang desisyon. Noong June mm -hmm. 2018, ang sabi ay eh, constitutional. Yung pagsasampa ng kaso sa inyo at pagpapag sa inyo sa Senado. Tama po. Yung pangalawa naman ho, ay eh, yung desisyon ng Supreme Court na hindi kayo pwedeng mag-participate sa session ng Senado. Actually, yung pag pagpaparticipate, I'm not sure if I don't think it reached the Supreme Court. Yung pagparticipate ko sa sa Senate, sa Senate lang talaga yon. Mm -hmm. Yung 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 the second case na umabos yung sa yung second case sa Supreme Court, aside from yung the validity of my arrest and the charges against me, ay yung uh, petition for habeas data. Mm. Yung habeas data, final namin yon against then President Duterte. It's about yung violation of my right to privacy. Gawa ng mga pambabastos niya sa akin. Unfortunately, mm. it was dismissed by mm. a majority vote. It, there were only two dissenters. And, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the principal ground for the dismissal is because of the uh, immunity from, from suit. Because he was still a sitting president. So yun ang alam ko, that's, that's the second case. The matter about participation in Senate deliberations never reached the Supreme Court. So the Senate, uh, the yes. Senate actually just refused mm -hmm. to allow me to participate. Uh, nakikiusap ako nun through my allies, sila uh, former, uh, yeah, Senator Frank, sila Senator Risa, nakikiusap ako nun through them, mm -hmm. pero ayaw nila. Even mm -hmm. if naging uso na rin yung mm -hmm. uh, online, Zoom. yung Zoom, <laughs> yung oh. nagka-pandemic. So if others could participate online, Correct. why not me? Because I was still a sitting mm -hmm. senator. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not been convicted. Mm -hmm. So why not? So right. lang, again, they did not. 
All right. Ngayon, Senator Laila, ang sabi nung ilan, yung inyo pong kaso at yung eventual pagbibigay sa inyo ng right to bail, eh, anim na taon lagpas, makalipas ang inyong pagkakahuli. Eh, parang object study ng delay o yung grudgingly, exceedingly slow due process sa bayan natin. Kayo po yung nagkaroon ng arraignment 18 months after kayong mahuli. E paano pa po yung mga walang pangalan o estado sa buhay? Anong silip ninyo? Yung inyuhubang paghihintay ng labing walong buwan, walang arraignment, walang lina, mm -hmm. walang mayayari. Anong ganap? Para sa ibang tao, sobra ba yun? Hindi dapat yun mangyari? Hindi dapat talaga nangyayari yan. And that remains to be really a very big challenge for uh, the justice system, for, mm -hmm. for the Supreme Court. Na, well, they have been issuing from time to time a certain circulars. There have been rules about that, trying to lessen the delays, trying to minimize the delays. Unfortunately, in many cases, hindi pa rin mga nasusunod dyan. But I think the Supreme Court has been uh, really coming, uh, thinking of other ways on how to further uh, st strictly apply those existing existing guidelines. Because if it could happen to me, na talagang grabe yung delays and what more with the other cases. But then again, and I always say this in, 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 in my other interviews, even if I did see that, na the, the justice system was not really working ideally because of the delays, and then meron din kami ang mga setbacks, mm -hmm. ng mga nadinay, ng mga motions. And then yung una nga naming mga applications for bail were also denied. I still insisted sa team ko, let's work within the system. Let's not lose hope. Let's mm -hmm. continue working within the system. No matter how you know frustrating it may be many times. Mm -hmm. But because it is only through the justice system that I would be able to attain vindication. Wala mm -hmm. namang iba. Mm -hmm. Kasi kung susuway ako sa justice system, let's say, nagtago ako noon, tumakas ako noon, paano ako mabibindicate? Paano mm -hmm. ako map mapapakinggan ng mga tao? Paano malalaman ng mga tao yung katotohanan? Kung mm -hmm. hindi ko ipa ipapara ipapadaan sa tamang proseso, Ayon sa konstitusyon, ayon mm -hmm. sa ating mga batas. So mm -hmm. it never really occurred to me to flee mm -hmm. our, Pero, the, mm -hmm. to, to the jurisdiction of our courts. Okay. okay. Pero yun hubay sumagi sa isip ng inyong mga kakampi at mga kaibigan na uh, Sen Laila, eh, tumakas na lang tayo. Na plano ho ba yun o na isangguni? Wala naman actually. Maybe <laughs> indirectly. Indirectly may mga ganon. Mm -hmm. Pero I, I think they they know me enough mm -hmm. na hindi ko ta, hindi ko iko consider yan. Okay. Ngayon, punta tayo. Apat na lalaki ang nagkuyog sa inyo, lima namang witnesses ang nag-recant ng kanilang testimony. So apparently ito yung series of events, ito na lang taon na to at nakaraang taon. Uh, ano ho yung silip ninyo doon? Bakit finally took them, well, siguro six years is too long a waiting period, ano? para mag-recant o tumiwalag sa kanilang testimonya kontra sa inyo. Ano yung nangyari? Hey, konting fact check na muna, Malu, ano? It's not really accurate to say na lima ng witnesses ang nag-recant. Nag okay. It's actually less. Um, okay. Well, there are four. Kerwin Espinosa. Four, four individuals. Agas. Kerwin, hmm. Kerwin Espinosa, Ragos. Ragos. And then uh, Ronnie, da Ronnie Dayan, and then another one, Alarco. But oh, you see, Carmen Espinosa and Alarco, uh, hindi po yan naging witness sa, okay. sa kaso ko. Hindi mm -hmm. nila ginawang witnesses. Kaya never silang humarap sa mga kaso ko. But sinabi nila na sila rin, kasi nag-testify sila noon sa Senado eh. Mm -hmm. At sinabi niya ni Kerwin Espinosa na isa daw ako sa, sa benefactors ng, mm -hmm. ng kanilang ilig. Kasi self-confessed drug dealer yan, si Kerwin Espinosa. Number one daw ako dun sa benefactor niya. Meron daw siyang listahan, yun ang kanyang kwento. So bin binawi na niya yan. Okay. Uh, so, uh, informally in the sense na it's not within the, any court case. All right. Okay. 
in in another well it was within a court case but in his case in mm-hmm. the case against him but not in the cases against me ganun din sa alor ko now si ragos talagang it's within one of my cases and in in fact that was the main reason why na acquit ako dun sa isang kaso kasi nagrecant siya he was subjected to to extensive to rigorous cross examination by the prosecution the the court um accorded respect to that recantation and uh, na naniwala yung court that it was done freely voluntarily and without any improper consideration kaya in affirm niya yung validity the legitimacy and the credibility of that recantation na naakwit po ako doon ito naman sa kaso na ito kung saan nabigyan ako ng bail hindi factor yung recantations yes there were several dalawa yung nagsumulat na na they are now recanting at sinabi meron pa daw ibang lima na balak din magrecant but we're still waiting for their formal recantation na isa submit din nila sa court but yung sa bail hindi na umabot yon or hindi na aabot at hindi na umabot so the bail grant was purely based on the evaluation by the new judge of the testimony the totality of the evidence presented by the prosecution during the bail hearings at nakita nga ng judge na hindi sapat yung mga ebidensya na yon yung mga testimony na yon at nakita niya yung mga butas yung mga pagka unbelievable yung mga ibang kwento kaya ang naging conclusion ng judge the prosecution failed to establish uh the strength of evidence because uh, sa usapin ng bail the prosecution had the burden of proof to 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 establish that that the evidence of guilt is strong they failed to do that according to this new judge who granted us bail so wala pa yung usapin ng recantation so what more if there had been recantation all right so, Ngayon, sa totoo lang po yung naganap yung parang naging witnesses against you ang sabi ni Mr. Ragos eh parang prepared draft daw yung testimony ang pinapirmahan sa kanya. At ngayon itong mga bumabaliktad sa statement eh parang tila nagkaroon ng linaw ang kwento matapos ang Duterte administration at iba ng panahon ngayon. Yun ho ba eh sa tingin ninyo context dito? The change in leadership from Duterte to President BBM. Bali nagkaroon ng sila din na nagkaroon ng laya na magpahayag ng kanilang uh, sa loobin. We cannot, we cannot deny the fact na malaking factor yan. Mm-hmm. Nasa tingin nila dahil uh, iba na ang administrasyon, wala na yung administrasyon o wala na yung mga personalidad, wala na sa poder yung mga personalidad na may kagagawan nito, mas mm-hmm. meron na talaga silang laya o lakas ng loob na sabihin ng katotohanan. Yun mm-hmm. lang naman ang palagi kong sinasabi, yung recantation na yan. Mm-hmm. Now, is either gusto talaga nilang gawin yan, well, fine. Sila lang naman, sila naman, that's their initiative. We, we, we never approach them. Sila, sila ang sumulat. Sila yung nagsabi na gusto nilang mag So, that is their initiative. For as long as sasabihin nila yung katotohanan, syempre, welcome na welcome yan sa amin. And more than yung pagsasabi ng, kas- ng katotohanan, more than sa, pagba- sa pagbabaliktad uh, nila, nasasabihin na nila ngayon kung ano yung totoo, ay gusto namin malaman paano nangyari yun. Sino yung mga kumausap sa inyo? Sino yung mga pumilit sa inyo kung totoong pinilit kayo? Sino yung mga, mga nanakot sa inyo? Sino yung mga nag, nagbigay, nag-promise sa inyo ng mga kung ano-ano like, uh, like executive clemency or whatever or maybe monetary consideration and all other kinds of consideration. Because yun ang da, yun ang ano das kailangan ko yun for my full and complete vindication the whole truth okay. because I want people and the whole world to know the okay. whole truth. Full and complete uh, vindication means you are planning to file suit against these people who coerced yung witnesses na nabumaliktad nagrikant. Ibig sabihin sabi ni Senator Frank pwedeng kaso ng subornation. Pakipaliwanag of perjury. Na- or perjury. Ano po yung parang plano ninyo? Kayo ba'y nagpaplano talagang mag 
magbigay ng mag-file ng kaso dun sa mga nag-coerce, dun sa mga witnesses. Yung sinabi ninyong nangako ba o kung ano man ang ginawa, ang nangyari, paano sila pinapirma at pinagtestigo ng ganung mga statement. Sila ho ba'y hahabulin nyo? At sino-sino sila? Hindi pa namin masabi talaga kung mga sino-sino sila. Although of course, kung yung mga talagang uh, sumusubaybay na mga mga balita, ng mga kaso ko, more or less we have some idea kung, kung sino yan. Um, you have to excuse me. I, hindi ko muna siyempre pwede yung pangalanan kasi pinag-aaralan pa yan ng, ng husto ng aking legal team. At maski yung mga specific courses of action, specific legal remedies, ano exactly uh, kaso. But kasama yan yung sinasabi ni Senator Drilon, yung subordination of perjury, yung iniinduce mo, yung mga nagsinungaling, ikaw ang nag, nagpumilit o ikaw yung nag-encourage, no. ikaw yung nag... Oh, oh, yes, no. nag-ujok, yun no. ang subordination of perjury. Kasama yan. Meron pa pwede pang iba. But my legal team is carefully... Uh, evaluating everything because gusto namin pipili lang kami kung ano yung mga malalakas na kaso na pwedeng i-file at mm-hmm. kung kung mga kani-kanino i-file mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you know uh hindi pwedeng kalimutan lang yan and i you know if if we don't do anything mm-hmm. uh now i mean after my ordeal what would prevent again let's say the next group of powers that be the next administration to do the same thing all over again against uh, political enemies na kahit wala namang kasalanan. Okay mm-hmm. lang kung talagang may totoong mga kasalanan, may tunay na mga kasalanan. Pero okay. kung wala, uh, kailangan meron talagang mm-hmm. pananagutan. Pero Senator Laila, ang latest statement po ni dating Pangulong Duterte, yung Justice Department naman daw ang nag-file ng kaso. At hindi naman daw siya. <laughs> sino, ang, sino ang nasa Justice Department noon? Yun ang, isasagot, yun ang dapat itanong sa kanya. Sino na mamahala ang nasa... Who was the head of the Justice Department there? The Justice Department there. So, mm-hmm. at sino yung talagang nag-supervise uh, ng mga paggawa ng mga gawagawang kaso na yan? Okay, all right. Then nung kayo po ay nakakulong eh parang tila naging productive kayo ho sa mga dispatches. Balita ko ay may journal din kayo. Nakagawa ng dalawang libro ano po, yung isa with uh, Father Robert Reyes at yung isa ay sarili ninyong dispatches book. Ano pa ho ba yung mga natitirang mga naisulat, nailimbag ninyo o ililimbag pa lang? Ilan libo ho ba yung mga dispatches na yun umabot? At 2,000 plus atang ating mga dispatches kasi it was uh, dati, uh, although ngayon bihira na, pero dati mga almost mga three times a week yung mm-hmm. aking mga dispatches. And the, the journals are really daily. From day one, I really kept a journal. After praying the angelus early evening, I would write down all, all my observations of the day, all the uh, happenings, notable happenings of the day, kahit mga simple lang na mga pangyayari. Kahit wala akong naging bisita, kahit wala akong naging anumang ibang experience, well, whether I was just playing with my cats or whether I was just uh, talking to them or whatever, I would, I would, I would wrote them in, in, in my daily journals. And if I find time, perhaps I can come up with another book. Okay. So, plano okay. niyo kung ilabas yung journal at yung dayan, later on? Yes, they were telling me. My okay. my friends are 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 telling are urging me to do that. Okay. In yes. general, yung journal entry suba ay parang ano, largely mix of happy sad memories, happy sad mix. observations. Mix. Mix. Halo-halo okay. na. Okay. And reflections din sa mga emotions ko rin. Uh-huh. Okay. Even yung point na ano ba 'yon? Movement ng eh, kumbaga eh anong emotions ang tinahak ninyo from anger Misery, desperation, etc. What and happiness. Happen? Happiness was there all the time? Most of the time. Most of the time. Most okay. of the time, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. And, and then, you know, siyempre, kung may mga namamatay, I, 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 I express also my grief. my sadness, my grief dun sa mga sa, sa journals ko. And okay. then, if there are really uh, important issues, burning issues, 
And then, you know, especially those that are really the bad news, mm -hmm. I also express my anger, my and then my frustrations in my in my journals, mm -hmm. other than the dispatches before. So when I put it in the dispatch, I put it in the journals. It's more candid, more, you know, whatever. What I really think, what I feel, what I write in the journals. Ko. And the thick, thick notes. Several, there are many notebooks that I write in the journals. But there's no point that you started doing as your oppressors, cursing, cussing, etc. No, no. <laughs> Wala naman ganun. Wala naman. Yeah. Okay. Senator Laila, ba bago kayo na kulong at habang nasa kulungan, eh dumami yung mga awards ninyo. Ano po? Parang tila na bilang ko ay labing anim na yata. Ano ho? Pati yung most influential women, Forbes magazine, tapos yung human rights defender. Yung mga awards pong ito, pagka din dumarating sa inyo, ano yung nasa isip ninyo? Kayo ba'y binibigyan dahil parang kawawa naman si Senator Laila nakakulong? O dahil talagang tingin nila eh nasa tama ang inyong posisyong uh, pananindigan. Yeah, ang feeling ko lang is that it was all worth it. Okay? That this mm -hmm. this people recognize that mm -hmm. that it was all worth it. And that's why as far as I'm concerned, no regrets. Mm -hmm. Yun ang ano po. So since people recognize it including certain global institutions, then I must be doing something good. I must be doing what is right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and important to many. And that's why it's being recognized. Okay. Yun, ang, yun ang nagiging feeling ko. And that's why I always also urge myself to just continue. <laughs> uh -huh. Sige lang. Sige lang. Kahit nahihirapan ka, sige lang. Uh -huh. uh, yun, yun, ang, yun ang sinasabi to ko remember, sa... Remember, no? And people yeah. respect you continuously. Pero you never got to attend any of the award-giving body ceremonies. Ano po? Hindi nyo na. Yeah, no nakulong na ako, hindi na, wala na. So <laughs> I just I YouTube. just I just send a message guys via Zoom wala. I just send a written message to okay. them which somebody would read. Okay. okay. Nung kayo po na kulong na sampa yung uh, kaso sa International Criminal Court at ngayon ay nasa proseso ng investigation. Sa totoo lang, parang kayo yung pinakapandikit mula po no DDS period hanggang noong war on drugs, ano po? At ang mukhang nabanggit ninyo na open kayo kung sakaling kakailanganin tumulong sa International Criminal Court. Ano po yung silip nyo doon? Ano yung gagampanan ninyong papel at hanggang saan kayo pwedeng tumulong? Well, it's, it's an ongoing investigation. Correct. And I can, be, I can be a resource person. I can provide them some documents. I can provide them some information mm -hmm. that I, I, I've uh, obtained when I was... Um, Uh, also conducting my own investigations sa DDS kasi may period din na covered mm -hmm. doon sa I ICC investigation period nung sa DDS mm -hmm. hindi lang naman sa war on drugs okay. mm -hmm. so ganun din sa war on drugs because nga ako nga nag-umpisa ng, ng, in ng inquiry na yan sa Senate mm -hmm. so there might be certain other information na wala pa, hindi pa nakarating sa ICC which I can also provide to them I can also help them In, in terms of accessing uh, possible other resource persons or witnesses in 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 the investigation have you so in whatever in whatever capacity you are I'm willing I'm willing to cooperate and and to 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 uh, give assistance sila po ba nag communicate na sa inyo o nagpahiwatig na na pwede hubang mag-usap tayo o Pwede ko ba kayong tumulong? Meron na ko ba kayong official communication from the ICC? The... Wala pa naman. Wala pa naman. Yung mga una lang na communication when I I uh, submitted my own communication because I also submitted my own communication okay. to the ICC. Nung una. Nung una pa lang. Okay. In, in, in 2017. Okay. Senator yeah. Lyle, hindi nyo nga lang o. Oh. So from period ng Davao Death Squad to 2019, bago po tayo... 2019. Nag, oh, nag-withdraw. Uh, uh, nag-withdraw sa... Uh, Rome, Rome Statute. Rome mm -hmm. Statute. Indictable pa rin ba si Vice President Sara? Kasi noong panahon na yon siya ay nagsilbe bilang mayor ng Dabao? Doon sa period na nakikita ko, I, I, I don't have actually uh, the, the exact ano, 
but if if yung period na alam ko pwede pa uh, i i don't have the exact duration but i've been i've i've read some some articles about it Correct. but i i i cannot really uh confirmed it on my own mm. if if kasama yun i need to see the 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 papers mm. Paano ho yung from the yan? icc Mm. Yeah. Kung walang imbitasyon ang Philippine government o walang approval ng pagbisita ng ICC investigating team, parang tila medyo mahirap po yata kung walang official invitation from the Philippine government. Anong tingin nyo doon? Bibigyan na ba under BBM admin ang ICC team na pumasok sa Pilipinas? Kasi nung panahon po ni Pangulong Duterte, tila talagang no entry. Mm. Well, I, I hope that really the current administration would do that, that mm -hmm. they would cooperate, that they would allow the ICC probers to to come in. Now, pero kung hindi, it doesn't mean na hindi na pwedeng mag-investiga. They can still do that by some other means mm -hmm. without being physically here, without being without physically accessing witnesses here. Witnesses mm -hmm. may stay, may go may go to them, mm -hmm. and then they can do they can do depositions also for right. witnesses. And I think. There have been some ongoing uh, uh, efforts about that. Talking to witnesses, also depositions. Di ba si Las Canyas, nakausap na nila, nagsubmit na nga ng, uh, ng affidavit. So there are, I think, uh, uh, certain uh, steps now be, mm -hmm. being done by the, by the uh, investigators, even if they have not yet physically accessed our country they have not yet been here in our jurisdiction but syempre it would make their job easier if they are allowed entry all right ngayon ang sili po nila ay parang tila tatagal itong prosesong ito ano po at ang parang medyo kailangan ilagay sa secure position ay yung mga witnesses o yung mga relatives ng mga victims na listed doon sa kaso sa tingin niyo ba ang Kasong ito ay matatapos uh, sa panahon ng BBM admin kasi kung magkaroon na naman ng pagbabago ng political administration, eh baka maudlot na naman ang investigasyon. We, we cannot tell. We cannot, we, can, we cannot really say that at this point. I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I mm -hmm. wouldn't know if there is a chance that the investigation would be completed within the term of the current administration. It may or may not. Mm -hmm. It may or may not. Right. So that, that that's the way it is. I mean, ganyan talaga ang proseso. There have been mm -hmm. other investigations in other countries na talagang tumagal. Meron din mga sandali lang. So, mm -hmm. so it depends. But of course, if this government, this current government would cooperate, mas mapapadali sana. Okay. And, and, and that's why I hope that, that, that it would. And, okay. and that's why I'm glad about the filing of that resolution in the House of Representatives with the Makabayan bloc urging the government to uh, to uh, allow the entry of the ICC probers and i-refer na ata yon to the appropriate committee. I hope so and I, I hope the Senate would, would do the same. Somebody would also file uh, a counterpart measure. Okay. Sabi ho ni Pangulong Duterte kahapon, eh, parang sige, welcome ICC, come, come, come. I will even lecture you on international law. Ano tingin niyo ho ba? Yun ba eh parang pagyabang lang o talagang confident siya? O kasama talaga... lang yan. Kasama lang yan sa usual braggadocio niya. Ganyan, ganyan naman yan, di ba? But sigurado kinakabahan din yan. Alright. Ngayon, ang tanong ko lang po sa pamilya po ninyo, yun hong lumipas na anim na taon, walong buwan, 21 days. Ano ho yung naging epekto sa kanila? Of course, your mother has been uh, you visited her, nagpunta na kayo ng manawag day after kayo makalabas ng prison. Ano ho yung epekto sa pamilya ng pagkakulong ninyo? Uh, they've always been putting a uh, brave front. Mm -hmm. yun, po ang, yun po ang desisyon ng aking mga kapatid. Huwag nang ipaalam sa kanya, baka lumala pa. Uh, mm -hmm. Kaya ang alam niya ay talagang napumunta lang ako sa States, nag-aral. So ngayon na uh, Bumalik na ako, nakita niya ako, all the while, nanggaling lang ako sa States, hindi ako galing sa kulungan. At nagkaroon mo ba ng serious financial dent ang inyong pagkakulong sa pamilya at sa inyong personal na buhay? May dalawa kayong anak. So Definitely. Ano? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Definitely. Kasi mula nung 2022, wala na akong income noon. So mm-hmm. I was uh, uh, relying almost exclusively lang on my on my savings na unti-unting na deplete. Although there are naman gracious friends, generous friends na paminsan-minsan ay nagbibigay na para makatulong din mm-hmm. sa mga araw-araw na mga needs ko sa krame at saka sa household. Okay. Because I have needs in the household. I have children. I have grandchildren. And then in, in Krame, I have needs also. My food there, my supplies. Your cats. And, 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 yeah, and then your cats. I have my, my cats. I have to feed them. And the others, like the birds and the chickens. So, um, and, and I feel blessed na may mga tumutulong rin sa, sa akin because I've, I've run out of resources since 2022. When I'm no longer in uh, government service, plan ako ibang sources of income because I'm, I I was never into business. Talagang ang ano ko is solely on my profession and on my uh well uh income as a uh, as a public official. First Christmas ninyo. Yes, After yes. kapulong ng anim na taon, walong buwan, dalawang put isang araw. Ano yung gagawin ninyo ngayong Pasko? At ano yung next steps para kay Senator Laila De Lima sa bagong taon? Babalik ako dito uli. Dito sa amin, dito sa Iriga City, sa mami ko. Kasi right. in the next few days, babalik na ako sa Manila. Pero sa Christmas, I'll, I'll be back here to spend my Christmas here. It will be the best Christmas ever to be again with her and the rest of the family and other relatives will be having a sort of reunion here mm-hmm. so i'm i'm looking forward to it now next step sa akin ay uh, ang dami ko munang aasikasuhin to rebuild my life yung to uh, uh to to uh, find uh, to, to how to earn again income Um, I have to resume my law practice, I think, but I have to go through first MCLE mm-hmm. uh, seminars, and then I'll, I, I'm considering going back also to teaching at law schools. You know, mga first uh, ano po, plans Thanks. for in in oh, yes yeah. yes okay. whatever is do- next, bahala mm-hmm. na. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. May New Year's resolution na ba kayong naiisip ngayon para sa yung mga umaway sa inyo at kumampi sa inyo? Wala pa naman. Wala pa. Pinag-iisipan <laughs> ko pa. Although ano ko is, pinapatawad ko naman sila except for one. Nasabi ko na yan sa lahat ng mga interviews ko mm-hmm. na, na magamat na patawad ko na karamihan na, na yung mga nag-ano sa akin pero isa pa yung hindi ko pa kayang patawarin. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still asking for God's grace to do it. Give me the courage the strength to be able to do it. I, I simply cannot just uh, uh, for, forget uh, what was done to me mm-hmm. uh, out of sheer vengefulness, mm-hmm. uh, destroying my life. And not just me, it's, it's my family, how, how it affected my family. So, hindi uh, humadali. Madaling sabihin na, sige, patawarin mo na yan. Tao, man, tao lang naman tayo, kaya patawarin. Tao lang siya, tao ka. So patawarin mo na, but hindi ho ganun kadali. Maraming maraming salamat po, Senator Laila De Lima. Nakulong man, hindi naman nawalan ng panindigan. Maraming salamat, okay. Malu. Maraming maraming salamat.